Welcome back. Spain came out of Group H to win in 2010, and you'd figure this would be a good omen, but there sits Russia. Russia, who occupied and then supported the invasion of South Korea. Russia, who supported the independence and the nationhood of Algeria from France. I don't know how Russia feels towards Belgium, but that's why you play the games. It's our last group. Here's Group H. Moving into Group H, we start with Belgium, Algeria. And for Belgium, it's the Bright Highway. Amid all the metropolitan clusters of light, the Belgian motorway is the only structure on Earth the naked eye can see at night from space. In the 1950s, concerned over nighttime traffic fatalities, the Wallonia Transport Ministry started lighting everything they could. Today, almost 90% of Wallonia Highway and a full 100% of Flanders Highway is lit at night. It's not without its own kind of risk. If you lose control, you're twice as likely to hit one of the 150,000 lampposts than you are a guardrail. Algeria's response is St. Augustine's Swerve. One line from St. Augustine's Confessions has been a point of debate for 17 centuries. It goes, Dear Lord, make me pure, but not yet. Trying to uh, reserve some playtime before the celibacy vows kick in, buddy? Some scholars think Augustine, a master of rhetoric, was making light of men who um, think with the wrong head. But both James Bond and Robbie Williams have quoted it without pretense, so if St. Augustine was trying to make a point through sarcasm... Oh, he totally nailed it. Well, they're both about managing curves. What does Alex think? Lousy with lampposts and the confusing confession tie two to two. Great. Now our second match is Russia against South Korea. And for Russia, we have the Motherland Coles! Okay, a quick recap of the world's biggest statues of people. There's Spring Temple Buddha in China, it's tall and plain. There's Buddha in Burma, tall and plain. There's Buddha in Japan, there's Wanyin in China, there's Hanawan in China, there's Wanyin in Japan, there's Wanyin in China again, there's Buddha in Thailand, there's Wanyin in Japan again, there's Buddha in China again, then there's Ho! Look at this one. The Motherland Cause is as tall as the Statue of Liberty, but because of that pose, its engineering is far more complex and dangerous. It leans eight inches. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but because of its shape, another inch or two and it may topple. And for South Korea, it's Hangul Day! In the 15th century, Sejong the Great issued a challenge. Codify an alphabet that a wise man can acquaint himself with before the morning is over, and a stupid man can learn in the space of ten days. Hmm. The result was Hangul, the most intricate system of writing ever created and the reason for a public holiday on October 9th. Each syllable has a symbol that indicates the sounds, not the letters that make it up. There are stress marks and notations to indicate which G or C sound or E sound you need to use for the word. For this one, let's hear it from Adam one last time. Both are lame, but you have to give something to a guy named Sejong the Great. South Korea, 1-0. Great, update the scores and now we have Belgium, Russia. Belgium brings out Druan Antigoon. Why is Antwerp called Antwerp? According to folklore, a giant named Druan Antigoon guarded the bridge going over the river Scheld and charged a toll. If you couldn't pay him, he cut off your hand and threw it into the river. So in Dutch, hand werpen, werpen meaning throw, hand werpen Antwerp. This statue shows a young buck named Brabo who was sick of this policy and threw Antigoon's hand in the river instead. Russia counters with Clock Base Cafe. Meet Ivan Mitin. He figured that modern coffee houses were all the same. People pay for one expensive drink and park for hours. So instead, he charges for time. Four bucks the first hour, up to twelve bucks max. In Clock Face Cafe, he provides all the accoutrement that chains nickel and dime you for. And who's coming in? People doing group projects. He's actually attracting large groups who use lots of time. Brilliant! Having a hand in this one, Emma. It's a tie, 2-2. Two, two. Thank you, and now we move to South Korea, Algeria, and South Korea gives us the wedding day whipping. At the conclusion of a South Korean wedding ceremony, friends of the groom give him the gift of food. When we say give him the gift of food, we mean bind his legs, strip his feet bare, and beat him with dried yellow corvina. Whacking him on the soles of his feet with dry fish somehow pumps him up for his new wife's needs later that night. If anything, it keeps him from walking out on the job, I guess. Algeria responds with Camus' final page. When it comes to well-known Algerians, Albert Camus tops the list, so why can't anyone explain his death? 
He had a well-documented fear of cars, driving, riding, hated going fast, hated travel altogether. Despite all this, when it was time to head home from a vacation in Provence in 1960, he accepted a car ride home from his publisher. What happened? A one-car crash, one fatality. Hmm. What was in his pocket at the time? An unused train ticket for the same journey. Both of them are fishy. Which one is it? Christian. Give me fishy foreplay. 2-1. Alright, update the scores, and now it's the last shot for South Korea and Belgium. South Korea's final move is... The Boryong Mud Festival. Each year, millions of people flock to the Daishan part of Boryong for days of partying in mud. The Mud Festival started in 1998 as a way to promote mud-based cosmetics since the Boryong Mud Flats contributed ingredients to many of them. Now, the festival features mud races, colored mud, mud massage, mud wrestling, mud music, even a mud prison for patrons who have yet to get dirty. It's Lather, Rinse, Repeat's evil stepsister. Belgium responds with the Menin Gate. During World War I, Ypres, in western Belgium, was so crucial to either side's strategy that five separate battles were fought over it. The Menin Gate commemorates the lives lost in these battles, but despite its size, there wasn't enough room for the 55,000 names. The list continues on another memorial in town. Since 1927, every night at 8, Ypres shuts down the road at the gate and a volunteer bugler stands at the foot of the gate and signals the last call. The only exception was during the German occupation of Belgium in World War II. The tradition was restarted the very night that the Germans left. One was bloody, one was muddy. We turned to Eric. Mudslingers 2, Men in Knights 0. Ring it up and we got our last match! Friends in life but enemies here, Algeria, Russia. Algeria? Couscous! To call couscous a staple food in Algeria is totally shortchanging it. It's officially their national food. There are unique recipes for weddings, funerals, childbirth, naming the child, and so on. In fact, the word Algerians use for couscous, the rest of the Arabic-speaking world uses to just say food. There's something social about this as well. It's a gathering dish. Proper preparation requires a handful of people, so in a sense, couscous means community. And Russia wraps up the group phase with... Tunguska! On June 30th, 1908, something bigger than a football field crashed near the Padkamaya Tunguska River in Siberia. The impact was a thousand times the Hiroshima bomb. Trees were knocked over for an 800 square mile radius, but there was no crater. The Tunguska event is still a puzzle. Recent modeling suggests a comet broke up in the atmosphere and the devastation was the shockwave from that explosion. So in Russia, stars reach for you! It's our last verdict for the group stage. Let's turn to Ryan. A huge cataclysmic impact is way more interesting than couscous. Russia, two to one. And that's it. It's the end of group play. South Korea and Russia became our last two teams to advance. Next time we move on to elimination. 16 teams and we know who they all are. Croatia, Cameroon, Netherlands, Chile, Greece, Japan, England, Italy, Honduras, Ecuador, Nigeria, Bosnia, Herzegovina, USA, Germany, South Korea, Russia. The last one's a little rough, but we'll see you then.